<clears throat> Hello. Hello, good afternoon, and Louisiana Beer Reviews presents a live hangout. <clears throat> this is a live, <clears throat> excuse me, live uh, review of Dogfish Head 120 Minute IPA. Probably be the last time I ever do it. Not looking to run around too much buying 32.99 four packs of 12 ounce bottles, tell you the truth. Age as well. Well, I didn't let it age, but about six months, and that wasn't even on purpose. There's a huge hop cone. There's the alert. <laughs> no ABV listed on this bottle. The Imperial India Pale Ale. The Imperial. You see how they wrote that, huh? Enjoy now. Or age for a decade or so. Well. No such activity occurring here. I'll try to get a date on the bottle, guys. Um, <clears throat> they had it at one store in my town a few years ago, but it was ten ninety nine a bottle, and I just said, mm, I don't know. That's hot. Then Total Wine and More had it for thirty two ninety nine. So for eight twenty-five plus tax per bottle, I said, "Well, okay, I'll get it. Once in a lifetime thing. I'm not running around paying all this high, high dollar stuff. I mean, I do it for some beers, but I'm not going to just keep doing it. Keep doing it. I'm like, okay, I've had it. It's great. Now we move on. Are most of the craft beers I try great?" Uh, not really. Most of the ones I try are um, very good in many cases. Most cases, probably. Uh, but um, fantastic, great, 95 to 100. Uh, I don't really run into that too much. Um but anyway, Valentine's Day, oh, a lot of people are out and about. I don't know what there is to do, so be cold. Go to a restaurant, wear a mask. <laughs> Sounds fun, huh? All right. Um, thick, well, not a thick, a, a medium to thin, actually. I don't know why I said I'm in the habit of saying thick. And I poured it aggressive too. Uh, well, high a high alcohol product like this won't give you much head of foam. Slightly off white, let's say ivory, and there is bubbles throughout. I don't. Let's see. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see the bubble screams. And it's not. It is not just bubbles. There's an incredible amount of sediment roiling about in this golden orange colored thing. It is it is clear to an extent because I'm looking through it and I can see the screen. I can see the shades, the blinds, the Venetian, Venetian blinds. Okay, so yeah, you can kind of see through it it's semi-clear. There is a bunch. It's not what you call haze, though. It's like chunks, chunks of white, whatever that is. Sediment, yeast. It may not just be that highly filtered. It's definitely not what you would call a hazy IPA in that classic or that general understanding. Because these are a pretty solid pieces. I still see them. It's like a cloud of chunks. <laughs> All right, I don't know how else to describe it. Specks. It's like little cotton pieces, or almost like if you took little pieces of bread, like little bitty, the slightest little piece of leavened bread. Aroma. 
Now, John Anile, he was sent a bottle, and he really appreciate that. Bumpy Road Brewery sent him a bottle. Brewing sent him a bottle. He can't get it in Georgia because Georgia has this irritating alcohol audit. You can't get any beer above 14%. If it's 14.1, you can't get it. Not legally. <laughs> so Bumpy Road over there in New Hampshire sent it to John and Nilly, and he really appreciated it. He got a bottle, and uh, his clearly said 16%. Now, I don't know why the one sold in New Hampshire said 16 but it might have been some state law thing where... You have to state the ABV on the bottle if it's above a certain percent or something like that. But the Louisiana ones have no age, no <laughs> age, no alcohol level listed. So the company who introduced this in 2003 said it's between 15 and 20, I guess, depending on the batch. Secondly, they said when they introduced it in 2003, Dogfish Head, had it, Dogfish Head Brewing had it rated at 21 IBUs. Uh, they might have run into trouble with certain states and found that they couldn't hardly distribute it anywhere. So they decided just to go with, say, in, in a general statement, in most cases, it's between 15 and 20. So probably around 16 or 17. That's high. I mean, that's too high, really. <laughs> I don't know if beer should be that high, but I don't care. <sighs> Michael Hill says, I am drinking some Tecate Titanium and some Med Dog. Oh, Mogan David 2020. Tecate Titanium, that is not a beer that appeals to me at all. I just don't like it. I'm sorry. I tried the Mexican brewed 5.5% version in 2014. I didn't like it. Then I tried the jacked up 7.5% uh, Mexican brood, but for the American USA market, and I didn't like it. My friend David said he liked it, but he bought a bunch of the tall 24-ounce cans at, oh, I think the salvage store had them. And those should hold up with that high ABV, but David Castillo has some heavy ABV there, Ron. Yeah. You got that right. I'm not going to be guzzling this. It's, I mean, it's very pungent. And the nose, strong hot oils. <clears throat> it's very malty, though. You know, they're saying it's a hophead stream. Okay, all right. I'm not saying it is, isn't. But um, on the other hand, Dogfish Head was opened in 1995, by the way, so 26 years ago. Uh, yeah, it's pretty strong. Um, that IBU is starting to build. Mm -hmm. They're asking me for my age. I'm looking. I'm trying to look up the website. Let's let's do a screen share. Cheers, Ron. Cheers to you, John. I'm glad Jesse sent you that bottle. I know you were excited about it. And John's not really a IPA guy doesn't really appeal to him, which is, you know, hey, that's a style thing. You don't have to like everything. Dr. Frosty Brew. Oh, I forgot you can post comments here. Stone Unfiltered. Um, I'm not sure I've had that one. Josh. Hello, Josh. A 2016. Golly. That's some, that's pretty, that's about the time that it was on the shelf at Mathern's. And I didn't buy it, but a lot, but it sold out. So somebody bought it. That last, the last couple of bottles stayed around for a while, but somebody bought it. They didn't lose on that. Yeah. Okay. You yeah. cookies. Let's see specs. Hundred and twenty. Let's do a screen share. How, how about that? And then you can look what I'm looking at. If you're if you're looking at if you're driving in a car, listening. Don't look. Just listen. Like most people do. It's like a radio show. 
September to December release, 2003 release date, Imperial style, India, Imperial India Pale Ale style. Now well, he's showing some kind of stout in that video. Okay, I wish they give the ingredients. Copper deep orange, yes, showed that. Aroma, sweet, citrus, piney, floral, hop aromas, almost candy-like. Candy? Uh, I'm not sure I agree with that. <laughs> I guess if you have a eight hop candy, no, I never did. <laughs> IPA glass, well, it's an IPA glass, tulip glass. I use this for my IPAs. Bought this at a yard sale for, I think, 25 cents. True story. Flavor, hoppy with some hop resin character. Yes. <clears throat> but you see, I'm saying multi. Not hoppy, but malty with some hop resin character. Mouthfeel slightly coating, yes. Lingering bitterness, yes. Uh, find this beer near you. Well, you know, it's probably out of stock in most areas now. Okay, so you don't want to put your uh, ingredients fine. Pale malts, obviously. You know, a lot of different hops. I'm not going to read the comments, y'all. I'm just going to respond to them. You can see them on the screen. They lost the original recipe and had to reinvent it. So it's great. I never heard that. But, I mean, I guess if Schlitz can lose their recipe, I guess anybody can lose their recipe. That was one of the, that was the second biggest beer company in the, in the United States 45 years ago. They lost their original recipe. But, I don't know. Maybe back then they just didn't keep up with stuff like that. I said, where did they keep their recipes? In a shoebox? Already drinking, huh? Well, I've already had one beer today. I had 11% Guinness Imperial Gingerbread Spiced Stout, so-called stout. Didn't find it was very stout in the body. Uh, but whatever. They, to me, it's like a strong copper ale, but whatever. That was the only knock against it. The thin thin body. Uh, aged in whiskey bourbon barrels. Oh, it was great. 95 out of 100, but you, a malt bomb, right? Yeah. With some light piney and citrus hop nose. I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, that's when I'm fine. I just thought it was going to be really tough to deal with. When David Garlapete and I did our first review of it, which was a duo, first time I've had, we just were like, oh, whoa. You know, we were so overwhelmed. Of course, we loved it. We gave it super high scores. And then I did a solo review and I gave it even a higher score. Dogfish had made the happiest, the hoppiest commercial beer called Who Lord. Oh yeah, Who Lord, Who Lord. This thing is hoppy. Sure is hoppy, darling. Girl, this thing is this this beer be so hoppy. Just moved from Maryland to Alabama. Any good beers I should try down in the South? So you're in the Upper South, and you moved to the Lower South. Um. Well, yeah, there's a lot of them. I'd say just try them all out. Don't let me influence you, but maybe Trim Tab be a good choice. Good People Brewing, Fair Hope Brewing. Those are three Alabama ones. I think you'd be happy with them. Um, so then I did a duo review with Robert the Whiskey Scout when he was visiting here, and he really liked it. He was kind of shocked by it, too. But really as i look through this beer look through it with you know my taste and, and aroma ability for faculties i think it's mainly a very sweet sugary guess that's like candy i was doing a rum taste challenge somebody was okay so what did i have today to drink 
I did the rum taste challenge at 5.30 a.m. Start exactly 5.30 central time. With uh, Ron Rico rum, which is confounding me to no end because I can't get it right. I keep getting it wrong on most of the taste challenges. I don't think it's because I'm not good at tasting rum. I just think it's kind of, it has sort of a universal flavor. You know what I'm saying? It's like a stereotypical rum flavor, a uh, white rum. So it's going to match with everything which is a great value for it because you're paying $9.99 a bottle in most places, but it's uh, easily battling ones that are $13, $14 a bottle. So it's sort of like flies under the radar. Ron Rio, Ron Rico, I'm sorry, not Ron Rio. Oh no, that doesn't fly under anybody's radar. That's not, on, on, thankfully it's not on most anybody's radar because it's so bad. But um, Ron Rico, it's a famous, well, Okay, it used to be famous back in the 1970s and 80s, but um, it it's just like the company. So let's make a rum that tastes like everything else in a general sense. So that's why it's so hard to do the taste challenges. Captain Morgan, I got all confused. I did Bacardi Superior, I got all confused. I guess with Castillo on Tuesday, I'll be confused. So I did that this morning. Yeah, I drank them. I didn't dump them out. I'll say, you know, I'm not going to waste them. But I mean, you see, I got two little glasses. You see that if you watch the taste challenges, I got two little glasses and I'm putting, what, a third of the glass full, if that. I mean, it's enough to taste them a little bit. But it's not like I'm over there guzzling, over here guzzling rum at 5.30 a.m. So that was a very interesting thing. Then we did the, then I didn't have anything else. I mean, except for water. Then we did the dawn, uh, the stout Sunday, and I drank 11%. The Guinness spiced gingerbread imperial Guinness stout, eleven percent. But it's only eleven point two ounce bottle, so you're losing half a half an ounce. I'm sorry, eight tenths of an ounce, eight tenths of an ounce, nearly a whole ounce. And I mean, I put a little of that blended whiskey in it, but that was like a stunt. That was like antics. I mean, if you watch carefully, I just dribbled the tiniest little bit. That was just for effect, just like you know, clowning around, being silly getting Robert the Whiskey Scout laughing because it was such a low grade blended whiskey, so cheap. Uh, that was just a stunt. And then uh, then I did another stunt where I said, I'm pouring another one and I poured the Paul on her. And they're like, oh, oh, he's drinking so much. But it was a stunt also because that was not alcoholic Rattler. It was the Paul on grapefruit lemonade Rattler. So that was no alcohol. And then I had about mm, two ounces of white wine, Pinot Grigio from uh, San Diego, uh, Crafters Union with, with the lunch. And now this, so, I mean, if you call that a lot and all of that time, I woke up at 1.45 a.m. I'm kind of a, a night owl. Uh, so in 12 hours, that's all I had, you know, it's, it's really nothing, <laughs> but this is something here. This is no joke. So 658 IBUs, that seems preposterous. <laughs> Belgian beers to 10.5, but this is another level. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you can get this in England or Northern Ireland for my own habits and beer drinking enjoyment. 15 to 20 percent is just too high. Yeah. For my normal habits, it's too high. Also, I would never drink this. This is just like, um, well, I mean, the beer is a gimmick. Stunt in, in front and right, Jay Hoppy. That's all. It was just like, that was like a show. You understand? Stout Sunday is a show. So I was just, well, it's like an act, you know. I mean, most people that have any kind of sense know that. I'm not opposed to it. It's just not for me as I like a few. Yeah, right. Same thing. I mean, that's it. I'm going to drink this and that's it. I'm not going to be revisiting it. I don't see that. I mean, if, if I go to somebody's house and he's like, I can't stand this beer. You want it? I'm going to say, yeah, I'll take it. I'm not going to offer to pay for it because I don't want it. You know, that's it. This is it. So the rest of your life, you're never going to drink it again. Oh, probably not. 
I mean, I don't know. In 10 years, I might want to buy another four pack. Um, but you see what I'm saying? That's not a regular thing. It's getting to be that way with the um, Bourbon County Stout. Goose Island Bourbon County Stout. It's $10.99 for a 500 milliliter bottle. $10.99. Uh, and that's if you're lucky these days. I just ran across it for $10.99. Everybody else had it for at least 50 cents more, Eleven forty nine. I mean, that's no kind of value. I mean, I've had it. I've had Bourbon County since the 2014 edition. I had them all, 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and now. I don't know about about 2021. Are they great? Yeah, it's like 100 out of 100 or nearly so. It's like one of the best beers in the world. I guess it is 100, really. 98 at the low, if you're really slamming it, you know, talking dog on it, it's a 98. Yeah, I know they had one bad year, 2015, where it was rancid and uh, I was bad. It was spoiled. And uh, the company sent me a refund. They sent me, not the tax, but they sent me the $11 back and uh a t-shirt i didn't ask for a t-shirt mm. that was an aberration but um and then they they admitted it <laughs> you know so um but besides that they always taste the same to me they always just taste the same now are they great yeah i just said that nearly world class or nearly world class outstanding at the minimum at the minimum it's an a plus but it tastes the same every year. So every year I buy the big bottle, I spend eleven dollars, ten ninety nine plus tax, and I say, oh, it's great. And I do a video and I say it's great, and then people comment, oh yeah, I love it, you know, and all of that. And um, but I just don't know if I feel like spending that much money every year from now on to to have the same taste. I mean, it's fine, but yeah, wow, okay, wee woo wee. Now, if you never had it before, okay, different story. Now, do they make a lot of flavor variants? Yes. Will I buy one of those? Probably, but they're much more expensive. Now, I'm not so sure. I want to pay that all, all buku money so that I could get a Bourbon County stop that, oh, this one tastes like mints. This one tastes like chocolate. This one tastes like peanut butter. This one tastes like... Um, chutney you know whatever uh flavor they're doing okay i know what all of that tastes like and it's nice but i mean i i'm not that dedicated to it <laughs> but i watch all uh facebook groups they'd be saying oh yeah it's incredible you know and i'm not downing them i'm not putting them down i'm not criticizing i'm just saying You know, I could buy a, a bottle of, I could buy a bottle of bourbon. And the thing about that is I could sip on that for years, like literally years. I could buy a bottle of bourbon for $23 and not 500 milliliters, no, 750 milliliters. And I could sip on that for years or scotch, single malt or blended, you know, whatever. Probably be blended if it's $23. Most almost assuredly, but okay, fine. And I can sip on that for literally years and keep going back to the experience. And okay, see the thing. And they got flavored spirits. They got spirits with. They got uh, peanut butter. This chocolate. That banana. This uh, 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 pomegranate that it's all uh, most of it's naturally flavored so it's using some kind of puree or dehydrated black cherry or whatever okay oh yeah oh, oh yeah but then i could pay the same amount and i could sip on that for uh, a number of years whereas if i buy these kind of beers this is it i gotta sip on it today it's gone after today you know this thing is not going to what am I going to do? Put it in the fridge? It's going to lose all its carbonation. It's prickly carbonated. The body's heavy. Let's get that right. The body's heavy. Get that straight. The finish is drying. It's like drying. <laughs> you don't drink this to get uh, blah, 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 blah. your thirst uh, satisfied. Now, you go drink some water. If you're thirsty, go drink some water, okay? That'll work a lot better. Drink some water. 
Uh, let's see. Going back to comments. And then I'm going to go back to this. Uh, so uh, uh, my friend Paul, who used to join us all the time for our wildcard Wednesdays and the Wednesday examinations, he stopped because he said the kids would not leave him alone. He's got four children under 12 years old and they just under 11. I think the oldest one is 10. Yeah, 10. So they are going to make 10, going to make 10. And so they, you know, they just, what am I say? They childish. Well, of course they childish, they children. So they don't understand he wants to do a beer, re beer review for an hour. No, it's come, come play candy land with us or whatever, you know? So he's, he's like, I just give up. But he said that he thought that liquor was a lot better value. And I, at, at the time when he told me that seven years ago, I was like, oh, no, nah, I mean, liquor's not that good, you know. He was saying, no, I think it is because you get, you can go process through it a lot slower and you don't, and you can rest on it and it's not going to go bad. And he said the beer, you just is one and done and it's gone. He wasn't saying beer is bad or, or inferior anyway. He was just saying for a value, a value balancing act or, or, or value consideration, I should say. Over time, I've come to agree with that. So, and then someone told me a year or two ago, oh, you're giving up on beer. All you do, you do spirits, liquor, gin, you know, gin, whiskey, rum, whatever. Brandy. I said, I'm not giving up on beer. I, it doesn't have to be mutually exclusive. It can be all of it. All right. It's no rule like you must only review whiskey. You must only review beer. You are only allowed to review wine. Oh, I'm sure you can review anything you want. Johnny Neely does food reviews. Now, I'm not really interested in that personally. I like to eat food. I get hungry like everyone else. Uh, it's just not something I'm particularly interested in. The only food review I think I ever watched was when he did the uh, McRib. McRib is back, Johnny boy. And so um, it was interesting, but I would, I, I, I'm not going to say that I'm going to start watching food reviews. I just, I'm not. Uh, and no, no insult intended. I just, it's not my thing. Ron, have you had the four local seltzers? No, I haven't. I don't think I will. I've, I've had a number of seltzers, which are actually beer, made with sugar, of all things, cane sugar. You can make beer with cane sugar. That's the truth. If you read the Tax and Trade Bureau website, it's allowed as a barley substitute. But I don't like them. <laughs> I mean, I really just don't like them. And every time... and and. And I know people love them. Obviously, people love seltzers because look, these hard seltzers, look at the, go to the grocery store. They have whole sections dedicated. So could I get a lot more action on this channel doing seltzers? I'm sure I would, but I'm not chasing uh, views and I'm not chasing subs. So I, I, I'm not going to do it. I just, I don't, I don't like, I like the cane cocktails, the, the pre-mix. I like all the rest. Just the seltzers, I, I don't like it. On a side note here in New Northern Ireland, I'm enjoying an American Brooklyn Lager. Oh, yeah, it's a very good one. Very good. Be careful of those higher alcohol beers. Drink those at home. Oh, yeah, I would never <laughs> drink them on the road. I mean, unless I was at a hotel, like, and, you know, the, the, the beer store was next door to the hotel and I could walk. Well, I mean, yeah, that, and I would just go back to the hotel room and drink some. Yeah, I and mean, we've done that on road trips, my friend David and I, where you know we go to the hotel. You've done you've seen those dual reviews of the hotel. And so uh because he didn't like watching sports. So if I say, let's watch a basketball game or a football game, oh he don't have any patience for that. Well, I mean, I do, I'll watch them, you know, but his main thing is just let's review this, let's review that. He's he'll review anything and he doesn't care, which is a, a good thing to do. He'll just review anything. I had the 15 Goose Island barley wine. Luckily, it wasn't infected. Oh. <sighs> yeah, they weren't all infected. It's just a lot of them were. How much does it cost? Which one are you talking about? 
the one I'm drinking? Oh, tequila. Well, <laughs> you're bringing that up because I mentioned that earlier. Or are you serious? Speaking of food reviews, says Simon Smith, you did a fine review when you would show what you're eating with the beer, usually on a cracker, which is pretty tasty. I still do that. Uh, but I do that just because I feel like eating something while I'm doing the review. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, I'm drinking this strong beer. I need to put something in my stomach. So I'll get some like uh, hogshead cheese or uh, I don't know, potted meat, put it on some crackers and eat five crackers. I guess that's a food review. I mean, I guess it is. Or I've done where I'm eating breakfast, you know, the Popeye's huge breakfast with a beer. And those are fun to do at like five in the morning. Uh, or six in the morning, seven, six thirty. Those, those break. I never get those. They're they're too much. You get so much food. It's like no one needs this much margarine. No one needs this much grits. It's like they give you a whole corn on the cob. You know? More than that. I'm not so much into food reviews, but I enjoy ideas for snacks with beers. Yeah, that's nice. I'm not. I'm not into food. Oh, one twenty IPA. Yeah, it's uh. I got a good deal. I got it for eight twenty five a bottle. All right. I bought a four pack, eight dollars twenty five cents per bottle, plus tax. Most people are paying ten ninety nine plus tax. See, at ten ninety nine, I probably wouldn't have bid on it. I probably would have said nah. But when I had it for thirty two ninety nine, I said okay, I'll, I'll I'll bite. No, I haven't. I've seen it, but I wasn't paying those ridiculous prices. You know, like hundred hundred dollars. I said hundred dollars. Nah. Okay, tequila. Uh, yeah, I was trying to avoid tequila because I just didn't feel like I had the time. I have all this liquor planned out. You know, I start off with rye whiskey, then I go to bourbon whiskey, and then I go over to blended whiskey, American. Then I go to blended Canadian whiskey. Then I go to blended Irish whiskey. Then I go to blended Scotch whiskey. And then I move into single malt Scotch whiskey. You say, no, it's too much. Yeah, but I mean, I'm, that's why it takes forever because I'm doing a little bit every day. And then I, then I go to brandy, cognac, brandy or brandy, same thing really. Then I go to uh, rum. So I was like, how could I ever fit tequila in? But then people kept asking about it. Do tequila, do tequila. And I was like, no, no, no. Uh, but uh, I wanted to go to River Ridge Discount on Jefferson Highway, Louisiana Highway 48 in River Ridge. It's a little town west of New Orleans. So I go in there and I got this woman from Pernod Ricard, true story. And she's given a tasting, like they do this around here. They probably do it in your town. Like they'll just be there at the store because there's some known liquor stores. And I mean, some of them are like what you would say in the hood, so to speak, because a lot of people are real prejudiced and all of that. So I was on US 61 one time and there she was, a lady in the store. Oh, oh, yeah, Pernod Ricard again, offering tastings of Seagram's gin. Because Seagram's gin got bought out by Pernod Ricard, French company. And I was like, looking like, what? <sighs> she's got this, you know, little display set up. And she's like wearing a nice white shirt, you know, black pants, like a waitress, you know. You know what I'm saying? Like at, a, uh, at the country club, New Orleans country club. And she says, oh, would you like to try... <laughs> Would you like to try Seagram's gin? I said, sure. I tried all the ones she had. And then this other guy comes off the street and he's like, she says, would you like to try some? He says, as a matter of fact, I think I will. <laughs> he said, i tell you one thing. I think I'm going to try all of them. <laughs> I said, oh, man, look at this guy. I said, probably the best gin he had all day. <laughs> Now, this beer is going down really nice, but I got to be careful with it. It's drying my mouth out. You know, this is the kind of drink where you drink it and you get thirsty. You know what I mean? 
I'm about to get off the area though, y'all. But um, so I was at River Ridge Discount, and the lady's like, "When you, you want to try Martell Blue Swift?" Well, I have a bottle at my house here. I said, "Well, I have that. It's great." Cognac, finished in bourbon barrels, and she had some other things. I don't remember all. I think she had four different ones. And she said, "This is Avion Avion Silver Tequila." I said, I never had tequila before. I didn't dare tell her that. You know, I'm trying to act like I know what I'm doing. I said, oh, yeah, I'll try that. <laughs> so I tried it. She gave me too much. I was like. <laughs> it was really smoky. It, it kind of reminded me of a smoked bell pepper, of all things, like a bell pepper smoked on a grill, charcoal. Well, I was fascinated by that. I said, well, this is what tequila tastes like. And I had a taste of that taste with the. Uh, the 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 uh, doers illegal mezcal barrel finished is it finished in mezcal casks or barrels as we say in America. So uh, I start thinking, you know, I say, oh, I'm gonna have to start buying tequila because I, I, that taste is in my mind. You know, I want to taste more of it. It's in my head now. So yeah, I'm gonna do it. Heck. Let's go back to the comments, and then I'm out of here. Is this beer great? Oh, it's awesome. And a little bit, I'll be slurring like, I really appreciate you watching my show. But um, I won't be driving anywhere today. Got all my driving done. Oh, look, nice lacing too, and it's clean glass. Look at that. Oh yeah, that's a good sign when it leaves all that lacing. This is like modern art. It is getting kind of opaque now as the uh, sediment settled. You notice that? It's turned into a hazy IPA. <laughs> well, that makes sense. I've been sipping on it and all the sediment has settled. It was clear at first. Um, 12 ounce, yes, it's a 12 ounce. So you're not getting ripped off there. You have to deal with tequila versus mezcal. Well, okay, uh, they're really the same thing, but there's a difference. Mezcal is made with any kind of agave plant, all right? So you can use any agave you want. Good matter. Could be cheap, expensive, weird tasting, regular tasting. You know what I'm saying? Um, but tequila can only be made from blue agave. type of agave and there's only certain areas of Mexico it can be made in which it can be made it's like cognac and brandy is cognac different from brandy no it just has to be made in the cognac designated region of France under a certain guidelines which don't seem to be too strict from what I read and they call it cognac and it's some kind of marketing thing really is what it really is have I had French brandy that was not made in the cognac region? That was pretty terrific. Oh, yeah. So is tequila better than mezcal or is mezcal better than tequila? Well, all tequila is a type of mezcal. So every tequila you drink is a mezcal. But if you drink it a mezcal, it means it's not, it may not be using blue agave. My issue with tequila mezcal is that there are some really nasty, tasty ones out there. Oh, I don't mind that. <laughs> I like to try those bad ones sometimes. They're kind of interesting. And I bought two. If y'all, if I showed y'all the two bottles I bought, you'd be rolling your eyes like, oh no, not not that. Watching from the United Kingdom sipping a Chimay Bleu, 9%, says Paul James. Well, cheers to you, Paul. I like you, that pink mustache you got. Chimay Bleu, is it better than this when I'm drinking? Um I don't know if it's better, but it's sure it's it's certainly not worse. It's no way inferior to this. No way. Uh uh. No way. Impossible. Lots of good ones, but the but man, the nasty ones really get you. You see, I don't I don't have any experience with tequila, so I'd be curious to try the bad ones. You know what I'm saying? So I could have like a reference point. Some people try tequila, or it could be anything. It could be whiskey. All right, say whiskey. But the only thing they ever try is like the $50 or higher. 
So you watch their videos. They're like, this is awesome. This is great. This is awesome. This was kind of great. This was pretty awesome. This was pretty great. And I'm like, well, yeah, you're, you're buying the most expensive bourbons in the world. What do you, what do you think they're going to be bad? So, I mean, of course I watched their videos, but they never track the whole market. You see what I'm saying? So I like to track the market. I like to go to the, like the lowest of the low. Yeah. And then climb the ladder. It's, it's an interesting experience. I did that with beer. Look at those wretched beers I've tried. And they were bad. They were so bad that you almost admire them. They're so bad. Like you, you admire their gall that they had to put that on the market. Jack says, uh, you're done with spirits generally, but the two things I want to try are tequila and mezcal. Well, hey, there you go. I'm sure you can get tequila and mezcal in the United Kingdom. No problem. Prior to the pan, the scamdemic. Okay, let's see. Simon Smith says to Jack, he's talking to Jack. Prior to the scamdemic, tequila and mezcal tastings could be found at some bars in the big cities during weekends on the bar schedule. See? See what these people did to us with their with their propaganda okay i tried a few there was a huge difference between the low end and the high end i would totally believe that Ron, brian romero says hey from maryland hello to you bhbgmb says where are you from maryland brian okay nice to see you on now ron i was watching your jim beam choice oh choice jim beam choice oh man i missed that bourbon Yeah, I don't know if the, the differences are actually minimal, but uh, the funny thing about hard liquor is this, uh, in man. Uh, of course, you could pay a hundred dollars and you get some great ones. I don't know what that is in pounds. Eighty pounds, hundred dollars. Our money is not worth as much as the British pound. Whatever. Well, you know what I mean. Okay, and you say, oh, this is great, great, great. It's all great, or we hope it is. But then you can buy some really cheap, <laughs> less than $10. You can buy scotch less than 10 bucks. That's really good. For instance, uh, case in point, Clan McGregor. Clan McGregor's good. I mean, you, you can watch some videos where they're just like clowning. That's like, oh, it's terrible. It's horrible. I'm going to gag. I'm going to puke. I mean, they're drinking it. But that's just like for show, you know, to try to pull in an audience, so to speak. And from the channel I was thinking of, it didn't really work. But anyway, uh, it's 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 a well-made product and it it's been on the market since 1934 not 1994 34 34 you think people are buying it because they hate it i don't think so uh sir malcolm okay there's another one been on the market since 1930 1967. is it great no is it fabulous uh-uh is it life-changing i don't think so but is it solid, enjoyable, bready, doughy, and just thoroughly smooth and delicious? Yes. Okay. And you can get it for $9.99 at some stores. Hunter Pipers, another, another example. One of the most popular Scotch whiskeys in India. You say, wow, that's India. Well, well you're, you're probably prejudiced, you know. I know what people think. Well, those, those people don't know good Scotch. Okay, all right. Maybe they don't, but they drink a lot of it. So probably, probably they do actually. But um, I think Hunter Pipers is really good. Is it remarkable? No. But if you saw the prices I paid for it, you'd think it was remarkable. So that's what I'm talking about. It's it's you got to be open minded. You have to be willing to try all of it. Try all of it. And I have, and I've been very pleased with uh, the experience. Can't say I've been pleased with every product. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's 
hope I don't pass out. All right, let's see. Ben, Jim, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not really kidding. All right, Jim Beam Choice. Great video. I mean, yeah, it was a great video because it was a great product. Charcoal filter, Jim Beam Choice. Oh, yeah, I really, that's a sickening story. They got rid of it in 2017 because the new owner, Suntory, didn't want to, didn't want to, apparently, from what I heard, could be wrong. It probably really because it wasn't selling, you know, the green label probably just wasn't selling. But uh, somebody said they didn't want to pay for the charcoal filtration system. Kind of sounds right to me. But I can't say for sure. But I know it's gone. I, I wrote to the company and they said it's cut. I ain't never seen it again. Great. Way better than regular Jim Bean, by the way. Hmm. I'm from Gaithersburg. Are you in Maryland? Also ballhead. I went to Maryland, y'all, and I went to see the Orioles four or five times at the Orioles Park in Camden Yards. Orioles Park is very nice. Secondly, I went to Caton, Maryland, Catonsville, Catonsville. And there's a really nice liquor store there on uh, U.S. Highway 40. That's a long highway. That runs from the Atlantic Ocean west to Utah. Used to go all the way to California, San Francisco, but they built an interstate over the, literally over the top of it. You just replaced it with an interstate highway. You know, the modern four-lane, you know, superhighway. But 40 still is numbered all the way to Utah. But I mean, you can still ride on it to California because they built it over the top of it. But anyway, if you go to Catonsville, there's a great liquor store called Montgomery Plaza Liquors. Montgomery Plaza Liquors. Oh, that was a fascinating place. I bought some nice beer there. Ronald, you have a great comic book collection. Yes, I do. I guess I started really hitting it up hard in May of 20 of 1986, May 1986. I have not missed a month. Haven't missed an issue since May 1986. Got a complete run. Batman, Superman, Detective Comics featuring Batman, Action Comics featuring Superman, The Incredible Hulk, and the Fantastic Four. But the Hulk and Fantastic Four were discontinued in 2015. Well, why is that? Well, nobody bought them. No, I don't collect sports trading cards, but I'm getting, I'm giving up comic books because they're all about politics now. And I don't, I don't want to hear all that. The stories are no good anymore. Anyway, the artwork is, the artwork is shabby. It's junk. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I bought my, I got my first comic book in 1974. My mother bought it for me, which was fantastic Four giant size number six. And now, after all those years from 1974 to today, I'm out. It's over. I'm not renewing my, my subscription. I was on the phone with DC Comics last week, and the guy's like, well, your subscription does run out. He was, you know, kind of hinting soon. And I was like, yep, oh, well. Frederick, Maryland, okay. Where in Alabama are you? The Pride of Edison, New Jersey. Right, Clay McGregor, bottled in Edison, New Jersey. Wouldn't you like to go visit that bottling plant? I would. Okay, we got we to gotta end this. This is going on too long. When you taste side by side, most people who are not experts would and do have a hard time differentiating between low versus high price liquor, hard liquor and wine. Uh, yeah, and I'm probably one of those people. Hello, sir, says Rito. Hello to you. But, but to be fair now, I did buy the Johnny Walker Blue Label, which was $226 plus tax. So that cost me like $242 total. It's a lot of money for a bottle of whiskey, right? And it was okay. I mean, it was a 95 out of 100. You say, well, that's high, 9.5 out of 10. Yeah, it's high, but I paid over $242. It should have been 100 out of 100. You know what I'm saying? But when I put it in a blind taste test against all the other whiskeys, it killed them every time, blew them up. So just goes to show you, a lot of it is in your mind. Because when I did a blind taste test, when I did not know what I was tasting, the Johnny Walker Blue just destroyed, destroyed all the rest. That says something. However, most people would. 
Oh yeah, right. They're like brand loyal, brand loyalty. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. They'll stick with that brand and they'll swear it's better than all that other garbage. And if you if you challenge them to do a blind taste test, they won't do it. Oh, I don't have time. No, you don't want to do it. That's what. That's why I love side by side reviews. It sometimes shows that the average beer or whatever can be every bit as good as the more expensive stuff. I agree with that. Oh, I've been shocked. I've been absolutely stunned with blind taste tests. Good old Alabama. I know some, I have so many relatives that always run into Alabama, run into Alabama. Fantastic Four re returned in early 2019, I believe, written by Dan Slott. Yeah, I didn't mess with that. That was one of these reimagined series where they change all the characters and it's what the Fantastic Four could be or should be or might be. And I was like, fooey, I don't want it. Same thing with the Hulk, you know. Now the new Hulk, he's woke. He's all about social justice and uh, politics. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm not going to buy it. <laughs> Haven't comics always been a bit political? Uh, yeah, I would say so. But then they weren't as, like, irritating. <laughs> you know, now they're, like, really, they just gr make you grind your teeth, you know. Yep, good old Gulf Coast. Gets too cold here, though. D Dolphin Island. Yep. I know people go here every year. Ah, not the company. Too much paperwork. Bought a bo I bought a bottle of Johnny Walker Blue for our top salesperson, and they were really happy to get it. Yeah. My friend David thought, he said it wasn't that great. I noticed he took a double shot of it, though. Just saying. A lot of viewers noticed that too. They said, well, he didn't like it, but he took a big old gulp of it. I say, a big old serving of it. I say, I know. <laughs> I guess if you know you're only going to, I guess when you know you're only going to try Johnny Walker Blue Label once, you may as well go for the gold, go for the gusto, right? All right. So talking about, I'm closing this out, talking about tequila. I could show y'all what I bought. You'd, you'd probably be embarrassed to see it. Hmm. But I told you when I was starting low, I was starting really low. That was by intention. And I was at Discount Depot and I was like, $8.29 for a whole liter? I'm like, we're talking about a liter, you know, big old bottle. $8.29. I was like, I'll do it. And it is bottled at Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace, you know, people that make Pappy Van Winkle, Taylor, Blanton's. <laughs> Eagle Rare, you know, stuff that costs you $70, $80, $90 a bottle, $110 a bottle, and they bottle in this. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, you're welcome, Simon. I like doing the videos. They're fun. I, I appreciate all you guys and gals. Some women do, not too many. Comment. Traveling Brews. Never had Johnny Blue, but got a bottle in a cupboard as a gift to FIL. FIL. Johnny Walker Blue is awesome. When you do it in taste challenges, on its own, it's not that great. But when you put it in a taste challenge, it blows up the other ones. I don't know why. It just kills them. You know, a blind taste test where you don't know which is which. Now, if you know which is which, forget it. That's not a good taste challenge. You got to do it blind where you don't know which which is which. It just blows them up. It just blows them up. I, don't, I can't even figure it out. Were you interested in Marvel's Ultimate Universe in the late 90s, early 2000s? Those were true reimagining of characters in an alternate universe. No, I was not interested in that because it reminded me of the old series from the 1970s called What If? You know, like what if Rick Jones became the Incredible Hulk? What if Spider-Man had joined the Fantastic Four and all of that? It was fine. I didn't mind it. But I just wasn't, you know, interested in it. And anyway, Marvel didn't even invent that. You know, DC is the company that invented those imaginary stories, not as as though none of the comic books are. I mean, they're all imaginary, right? But DC started that back in the 60s with, they would say, this is an imaginary story. They would always put a disclaimer. This is an imaginary story. Like Batman and Superman's sons. Like this, like Batman and got married and Superman got married and they had children and they had two sons and they would be on these adventures together. 
you know, Batman Jr. and Superman Jr. They call them the Super Sons. I have so many of those. But they would always start off the thing saying, this is an imaginary story. In other words, do not send us a letter saying this is not correct because they're telling you it's an imaginary story. It's not for real. And then Marvel got the idea saying, well, let's make a, a series called What If? What if this happened? It didn't really, but what if? You know, what if Phoenix hadn't died? Well, it turns out she didn't. <laughs> Oh, boy, that's one thing about comic books. If somebody dies, they ain't dead. They're coming back. And you can go buy the issue, the alternative cover, and really waste money. Yeah, most of those what-if stories have really happened at Marvel. I have some great comic books. So I got Black Panther from the 1970s. Like a, I mean, I bought those for so cheap. Do you have a recommendation for a good U.S. history book? There's something I would buy for my high school age nephews. Uh, not really. I, 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 I don't know. Because stuff I would recommend would be too complicated. You know what I mean? Like the, the creature from Jekyll Island. Now, I mean, the creature from Jekyll Island is a great book or, or that book from 1991, The South Was Right. It's a great book. They updated it recently. The South Was Right. Great book. But I mean, I don't know how many people would have the guts to read it. DC does too many of their Elseworlds stories that have no impact on regular continuity. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, I have a lot of books here, you know, and I would recommend many of them, but I just don't know if the people would find them interesting. It would be too, I don't know. A great book I read from 1965 was called The Secular City. The Secular City. It's a great book. Another one that was really good by, uh, can't remember his name. That was called It's Very Simple, the, the True Story of Civil Rights from 1965. It's very simple. It's that's the name of the book. It's very simple. Subtitle The True Story of Civil Rights. It's a really good book. They have a great chapter in it called The Life Among the Eskimos. Life Among the Eskimos. Um Great beer. Last call if you want to see those two tequila brands I bought. But you're going to hate me if you, I show them to you. You'll hate me, I swear. But they exist. These are real brands. These are like little, literal brands of tequila that are on the shelf. I don't know for what reason, but they exist. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Took me an hour to drink this. Oh, no. Wow. Do I feel it? Am I feeling it? Oh, man, you're feeling it, man. No, nah, not really. It just makes you sleepy, like kind of sleepy. But I would hate to see somebody driving a vehicle. You know what I mean? Like you're thinking, I'm good, I'm good, but you're not good because it's probably going to impact your uh, reflexes, you know? You think you're good. College turned me off from reading many years due to all the nonsense. Required reading, I, especially for math major, it was brutal. Oh, yeah, I can imagine that would be like suffering. I got an old math book from like 1925. Middle school math. I doubt any high school could handle that book today. You'd be, you'd be amazed by this book. I doubt any high school could handle that book today. I got a lot of middle school books from the 1920s and 30s. That would be way over any high school today, I think. All right, I'll show them to you. Hold on.
<laughs> right, right, right. Show the tequila. Very interested. Okay. I think 75 minutes. Oh, it's really good. Yeah, it's really good. All right. You asked for it. You got it. That, then that's it. I'm out of here. Enough's enough. But I think people like doing these hangouts, you know, watching them. And all. all right. Um, first, I'll show you one of the great values of all time that I got. You're going to think I'm lying, you know, but I'm not. Here's the uh, Cruzan Distillers Collection Estate Diamond. The Estate Diamond. Not regular old Cruzan. No, 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 no. This is the Estate Diamond Collection. Black strap rum distilled and blended in the Virgin Islands. See how black this is? This is a clear bottle. Okay, listen to me. This bottle is clear. The glass is clear. That's some black rum, huh? <laughs> See what I'm saying? See, I'm tipping it. That's black. It's really brown, but on video it might look black, but it's dark, dark brown. You say it looks like molasses. Wait, what, what you think it's made from? That's black, right? I'm not joking. This is, you know how much they had this at Total Wine? I don't know why. I think they screwed up. I think somebody coded it wrong. Hey, but I, I didn't question it. This is a regular size bottle, man. You know how much this bottle was? Take a guess. Anybody want to take a guess? It was $8.49. Now I saw that on the, it's got a cork, like a real cork. And I saw that on the website and I was like, that's got to be a mistake. I love this tactile uh, label, embossed bottle. So I went over to Total Wine. There it was, eight forty nine. I said somebody, I said somebody's getting fired. Somebody's definitely getting fired. You know, <laughs> terminated. But I bought it, eight dollars and forty nine cents. True story. Now, nah. that was the great deal of the century, right? Just. Just do a check. Check on this at other liquor stores. It ain't no eight forty nine. That's a wooden cap. I wouldn't pass that up. All right, now, now, now. Uh, can't get rid of history. It's against my very thin religious beliefs. I went to mass this morning. Geary, seven thirty mass at Saint Joan of Arc. Saint Joan of Arc, the heroine. Heroine. You know what I mean? In the female hero, female hero of France. Hey, Jay says, Bart, I enjoyed the Hurricane Triple Export Challenge. Got them both in the fridge right now. Oh, yeah, that was a great challenge. I had a lot of fun doing that challenge. Washington may reincarnate for that rum. Sleep, light, sleep lightly. Yeah, so I can't wait to try this black strap molasses. Oh, man, I think it's going to be so thick. I should have saved the Myers's and I should have saved the Jim, the um, Bacardi Black, but I can re I can repurchase them, but I ain't going to go for no 849. That's a, that's an insane price. Like the regular. Oh, somebody messed up. I just, I just think it was a screw up. All right. Y'all ready for this tequila? OK, here we go. Don't hate me. <laughs> These are real brands, I swear. All right. Tijuana, Tijuana Silver Tequila. Ay, yeah, yeah. Tijuana Silver. I did a trademark. Re I did some trademark research. It's a real brand, and it was like they got the trademark, and I think, I don't know, 1963. It's been around that long. Silver tequila. And you know where this thing is bottled? I'm not joking. I'm not playing games with you. It's bottled at Buffalo Trace in Frankfort, Kentucky. True story. It says right there on the bottle, Sazerac. Wide world importers. Uh-huh. And then it says right below, Sazerac.com. Okay. Yeah, at NOM number, NOM number 1143 in Jalisco, Jalisco, Mexico. Oh, I bet this is awesome. I can't dog on it because I never tried it, but I paid $8.29 for a liter. $8.29 for the liter. I'm not joking. That is a true story. <laughs> Might have paid $8 too much, but 
Okay. That same room is $22 in my town. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Something, Somebody messed up. It's bottled in the United States. It is. That black strap sounds delicious. I'll look for that. And I don't think you're going to get it for $8.49, though. Do you remember the Tahina Tijuana Brass Band? I have that album. What is it? Herb Albert? Herb Alpert? I have the I have the literal first printing of the Tijuana Brass Band. Now I got some albums, y'all. Y'all think this is a joke. I bought all those albums for 17 cents an LP, no scratches. Oh, I know some old lady died, some old man died, and they had a church yard sale and they sold them all. I saw those albums. I was like, I like almost fainted, you know, but I played it cool, you know. I was like, this huge box, Sound of Music, original soundtrack, 1954. Um, Al Hurt. Uh, you know, uh, what's the guy that had the TV show that was so famous that died, that guy that spoke German until he was like six years old, even though he was born in North Dakota. You know what I'm talking about, Lawrence Welk. Original copies, first printing, unbelievable. I bought them for 17 cents each, the huge box. I was like, how much for these albums? And the guy's like, well, you could have them all for five bucks. And I'm like trying to play it cool, you know, trying to get the money out of my wallet without showing my hand shaking. I'm like, okay. <laughs> South Pacific, original printing from like, I thought I was going to lose my mind. Yeah, Herb Alpert. How Albert Herb Albert. Well, I, was, I thought I was going to crack up buying that. Unbelievable. Incredible. And I got them. All right. Now. Nah. I mean, you just wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it. You would not believe it. Love it, baby. Got 10 of his. He started A&M Records. A&M. Albert. And yeah, right. What was that? What was the other guy? Mancini. A&M. Carpenters. Burt Bacharach. Oh, man, if you watch that Carpenters 1970 live from uh, Walter Reed Medical Center, when they did all the Burt Baccarat songs for the veterans from Vietnam, boy, that'll tear you. <sighs> Whew, that's hard to watch. That doesn't tear you up. You, you got no heart. You got no heart. You got no heart. Karen Carpenter, you got no heart. She was... I think still 19 years old when she did that. She was at the drum kit. That's like literally, you got no heart. If you can't watch, if you watch that and that makes no impression on you, you got no heart. You got no soul. Here's Tijuana Oro. Oh, wow. That means gold. Tequila with natural flavors. Oh, great. Doesn't even have a noun number. This is about the most illicit tequila in the world. And it's right there, headquartered in New Orleans, bottled at Buffalo Trace in Kentucky, Frankfort, Kentucky, and it exists. I bought it at Discount Depot yesterday on US Highway 90 Business Route Westbound at Discount Depot. And I am not lying to you. These two bottles, liter bottles, I don't know if they're any good, Eight. $8.29 a bottle, $8.29 a bottle. True story, $18.11 after tax. Now, I might have paid $18 too much, you know what I mean? It might be worth $0.11, cents, but I don't know. I haven't tried them. I cannot judge them. Maybe they're all right. Somebody's buying it. What else do they have on the shelf? Montezuma, El Toro, Tortilla, Tortilla Tequila, you know, like the really low-grade stuff. But that's what you pay for $9 and you get a mixed drink at a restaurant. <laughs> you go to a restaurant and get a cocktail. You think they're using a 25-year age uh, Cuervo Gold, 100% agave. Wrong. They're using Tijuana. <laughs> okay, that's it. I'm out of here. Joe Cocker. Yep. Herb Alpert. Alpert. Right. Alpert. Not Albert. Alpert. I knew that was right. 
Ron flexing us with all the bottles. Yep. Now, what tequilas do I have coming up? Well, I think I'm going to get the Montezuma, which is the ninth best selling tequila, the gold and the silver. That's only fair. Of course, I'm going to get that Monte Alban Mezcal. I know it's got a worm in it. That kind of grossed me out. I was looking ahead at a, a larva in there, like a caterpillar. I was like, I don't think I like that. But um, Monte Alban, apparently pretty famous. Monte Alban. They make tequila too, but this was Mezcal. Of course, Jose Cuervo Silver, Jose Cuervo Gold, Saza, you know, all of the regular ones. Oops. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, well, we all make spelling errors. All right, that's it. It was a very, very awesome hangout. The beer is gone. Is this beer worth $8.25? Oh, I don't know about that. I'm not too sure about that, but... Uh, you're really just paying for the experience to say, oh, I had it. I had it. And I had it. I had it four times. Oops. <laughs> I had it, Um, well, I guess three times because I had two full bottles and I shared two. So that's three. All right. I had it three times. It was great. Great. It was great. Havana's great. How do you say banana daiquiri? Banana daiquiri. I'm in Eastgate Hoppy. Okay. All right. Well, that's it. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching this video production.